Welcome to our daily devotion. The Methodist Church of Barbados invites you to sing, pray, and worship with us as we declare God's glory and celebrate His mighty acts.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you this evening in humility and faith. We thank you for all that you have given to us and the many blessings in our lives. We ask for your guidance and strength. Lord God, show us the way and fill us with courage and wisdom. Help us to remember your love and grace and to be faithful in our service to you. Heavenly Father, give us the patience and understanding to face life's challenges with grace. We thank you, Lord, for your amazing power and work in our lives. We thank you for your goodness and for your blessings over us. We thank you that you are able to bring hope through even the most challenging of times, strengthening us for your purposes. We thank you, Lord God, for your great love and care. We thank you for your mercy and grace. We thank you that you are always with us and will never leave us or forsake us. We thank you for your incredible sacrifice so that we might have freedom and life. Lord God, forgive us for when we don't thank you enough for who you are and for all that you do and for all that you have given. Help us, Heavenly Father, to set our eyes and our hearts on you afresh. Renew our spirits. Fill us with your peace and joy. We love you, Lord God, and we need you. We give you praise and thanks for you alone are worthy. Dear Lord, as we rise to meet, meet each new day, allow us to be filled with your spirit. Wherever we go, allow us to spread love, joy, peace, goodness, and faithfulness. Let us desire, Lord God, to become more like you and to worship you in all that we do. Help us, Heavenly Father, to desire these things so much more than the sin that entices us. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for always going before us. Father, as we gather together, we praise you for this day and your purpose for it. Reset our agendas as we sit in your presence. For you assure us, Lord God, that where two or more gather in your name, you are here. Lift our eyes, Lord God, to seek you every day, surrendering our need to achieve, understand, and be known. Shift our perspective to seek your peace above all else, Lord God. In every situation we ponder in our daily lives, allow the Holy Spirit, Lord God, to translate your commands. Give us renewed strength and godly courage to obey you without questioning. Forgive us for striving beyond our means, worrying and forcing results. Only you know what lies ahead, Lord. You are our good Father, just and righteous. Though our circumstances will be unfair from time to time in this life, you are always our unwavering protector and shield. And so, Lord God, we ask you to keep the words of King David fresh in our minds and renew our hearts to the tune of your truth. Let your peace rain down on us this evening as we seek you more than anything else. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let them come to the 
The scripture readings are taken from Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23 and 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 18. And I begin with Proverbs. Keep your heart with all vigilance, for from it flow the springs of life. The word of the Lord. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 18. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. The word of the Lord.
Good evening, brothers and sisters. This evening, we will be sharing on the topic, A Grateful Heart. And the guidance scripture passages are Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, and 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. Let us pray. Sovereign God, we come before you this evening to hear your word. Heavenly Father, as your word continues to take root within our hearts, we pray to God that we will continue to be enriched by the words that you have to say to us. And so, Lord God, decrease me and increase you. And let the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Brothers and sisters, a grateful heart. As indicated in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18, it is God's desire that believers in Christ Jesus remain grateful throughout their lives, regardless of their circumstances, be they favorable or unfavorable. Seeking the will of God should be our highest priority, my friends. In order to determine what the Lord requires of us, it is necessary to consult the scripture and pray. However, despite the clear teaching of the scriptures, discernment of his, his will may sometimes prove challenging and we may require his assistance. My friends, there may be times when the Lord does not reveal his will to us immediately, but he will do so at the appropriate time. And so it is God's desire that we give thanks in all circumstances. The Bible does not say to be thankful for all circumstances. Rather, it instructs us to be thankful in all circumstances. There's a significant difference, my friends, between the two. Although we will encounter negative situations in our lives, we are not to give thanks for these unpleasant circumstances, but rather for the work that he will accomplish through them. It is noteworthy, therefore, that even though our circumstances and seasons change, God remains constant. In light of all that he has accomplished, is accomplishing, and will accomplish in the future, he deserves our thanks. Every scenario should be viewed as an opportunity to express our gratitude to our Heavenly Father. Whatever the season, we should strive to cultivate a grateful heart. Psalm 100 verse 4 instructs us to enter his gates with thanksgiving and enter his courts with praise. My friends, we are to praise the Lord and give him thanks. Despite his all-knowing nature, the Lord values our requests and our appreciation and it's of great importance to him. A habitual expression of gratitude is a valuable means of developing a deeper relationship with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Although we know that we should cultivate an attitude of gratitude, we are more inclined to grumble and complain. While there may be 10 things for which we should be grateful, we tend to focus on the one thing that is irksome to us. Our tendency is to become fixated on a single area of failure while ignoring the other 10 positive aspects. In view of the fact that gratefulness is a habit that can be developed, one commentator Pastor Eric recommends that we cultivate a gratitude-filled heart by placing ourselves in a position where it can be nurtured. How can we cultivate an attitude of gratitude in our daily lives? Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23 provides the answer. Solomon, the third king of Israel, said, Guard your heart with all vigilance, for whom it are the sources of life. 
The word guard can also be translated watch. Watch your heart. It implies, my friends, that there is something valuable to protect. As fragile as the heart may be, it is also of utmost importance and value. One day, Solomon was given the opportunity to ask God for anything he desired. While he could have asked for riches, fame, or the defeat or death of his enemies, he asked God to grant him wisdom that would enable him to judge and lead the Israelites in an ethical and honest manner. The fact that Solomon requested such wisdom pleased God, so he bestowed it upon him as no one else had or would have after him other than Christ. Not only did Solomon receive wisdom from the Lord, but also riches and honor, which made him the greatest king of his time. Solomon imparted many lessons to us in scripture, such as Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, and an extensive portion of Proverbs. Whenever Solomon speaks of guarding one's heart, he is referring to the innermost core of one's being, as opposed to the physical heart, which pumps blood throughout the body. He is referring to the individual's inner core, the thoughts, feelings, desires, attitudes, and choices that are characteristic of him or her. The expression of gratitude does not begin with words. Our words may express it, but according to comment commentator Pastor Eric, it actually begins in the heart. The spread of bitterness sometimes is similar to that of a virus. It is contagious. Everything we touch is infected with it. My friends, whenever our hearts become bitter, we begin to act out, of, act out of that bitterness. We respond to offenses with actions that are vengeful and demeaning, which will ultimately impact our other relationships. When we feel guilty, we will not act out of love, but out of guilt. Likewise, the fear we feel in our hearts will prompt us to behave in a fearful manner. The same is true of gratitude. Though being gratitude is not an obligation, we wish to express our appreciation to God for the kindness and generosity he bestows upon us. Serving him is an honor, a privilege, and a joy. To ensure that gratitude is evident throughout our lives, we must cultivate it. Rather than being led by fear and guilt, we should be guided by love, faith, and thankfulness. The heart is the source of gratitude, and therefore we must safeguard it and pray the Psalm David addressed to God in Psalm 139, verse 23 and 24. David said, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test my thoughts. Point out anything you find in me that makes you sad and lead me along the path of everlasting life. My friends, listed below are four points that can poison a grateful heart. The first one is discontent. Discontent or dissatisfaction is caused by an obsession with what we do not have while ignoring what we do have. So how do we counter dissatisfaction? We count on our blessings. The time has come for us to focus on our blessings rather than our challenges. A wise person once said, he who is not grateful for the things he already has would not be happy with what he wishes he had. And so as Paul demonstrated, having a contented life is attainable. To be thankful in all circumstances, however, we must learn how to cultivate gratitude. The second poison, disappointment. A second factor that may poison a grateful heart is disappointment or a past hurt. It is important to note that the moment we are in the presence of another individual, we are liable to experience disappointment. 
Godly individuals, however, will not intentionally en engage in such behavior. For instance, we may commit time and effort to someone who does not reciprocate, who disagrees with us, who criticizes us or fails to appreciate our efforts. And this may result in disappointment. However, despite our efforts, we will disappoint someone at some point. Life is full of disappointments and we cannot allow other people's actions to adversely affect our hearts. My friends, we should therefore place our trust in God since he will never let us down. Our gaze must be upward and our walk upright. We must also protect our hearts as they are the driving force behind everything we do. The penultimate factor, dis disillusion. This is the third factor that may poison a thankful heart. It is defined as the condition of being dissatisfied or defeated in expectation or hope. Disillusion generally occurs when one learns that a certain thing is not as good as it appears. This is usually the result of self-created expectations. The sad reality in the world today is that so many Christians are afraid of loving sinners since they believe doing so would compromise their faith. In loving the sinner without accepting the sin, we embody the love of Jesus who loved us without restriction. A very tangible manifestation of God's love is revealed to us in Romans chapter 5, verse 8. As we wasted our lives in sin, Christ died for us. While we were enemies of God and of righteousness, he loved us nonetheless. The cross was the punishment for our sins. Because Jesus loved us so much, he sacrificed himself in our place. He also stated in Luke chapter 19 verse 10 that the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. And due to his immense love for us, he transforms us despite our flaws. The fourth factor we must watch out for is dismissal. This term is representative of individuals who are troubled by the absence of support and belief from those around them. King David is an excellent example of this. When we think of David, we envision the man who composed most of the Psalms, the sinner and the man after God's own heart. However, do we recall young David who was forgotten by his father? In light of Saul's rejection by the Lord, a new king was about to succeed him. Therefore, God sent Samuel the prophet to the home of a man named Jesse. To determine which son would serve as the new king, Jesse's first seven sons were summoned to appear before the prophet one by one. Seeing Eliab, Samuel was certain that he would be anointed. Nevertheless, the Lord instructed him to disregard Eliab's handsome appearance and height since he was not selected. The Lord does not view things from a human perspective, my friends. While we tend to focus on the outward appearance, he focuses on the heart. Abaminab and Shammah were then brought before Samuel, but neither was chosen by God. When all seven sons had passed before him without being anointed, Samuel asked Jesse if he had any other sons. One more son remained, but since he was the youngest of such little importance, and of such little importance, his father had left him out in the field tending sheep. When David stood before Samuel, the Lord said, Go and anoint him. This is the one. My friends, it is comforting to know that the Lord does not judge by appearances, but by the heart. God observed David faithfully caring for the sheep. Yet, he performed it with utmost diligence, although some people would have felt that it was very mundane. Despite his father's disdain for David, God saw David honoring his father. And so safeguarding our inner being is of utmost importance, my friends. 
For us to achieve the goals the Lord has placed within our hearts, we require guidance, encouragement, and support from those around us. If God instructs us to pursue a certain goal and those with whom we interact hinder our efforts, we need to seek out new friends. It is imperative, therefore, that we guard our hearts in the event that we allow our inner core to be affected or infected, it will negatively impact our relationships and our actions since everything stems from the heart. Amen.
for being a part of our daily devotion. We trust it has been a blessing to you. Now together, let us hold fast to his word and may it dwell in all of us richly.